Guys, my mind is blown. I never thought I would see the day that Apple would do this. It just didn't make sense. So are they crazy or are we just really lucky? I think now is the pinnacle of a moment where we have this great shift and the headline is this machine you can buy it right now for $899, but that's only a small part of the story that I want to tell you guys. Let's just get into it. I'll let you guys know why you need to pay attention and why this matters. Right now, I'm holding this beautiful laptop, and I think this is the best bang for the buck that we have ever had in a laptop ever. And I actually mean ever. And looking at the rest of the market, the Windows alternatives are more expensive with less performance in other limitations. With this M4 machine, this marks the next shift where we have a major changeover in the market. Now, looking back at the M1 MacBook Air, that changed the whole world, right? We went from having a $1,200 i7 fanless machine that would overheat and have pretty poor performance to a $999 Apple laptop that destroyed the Intel versions that came out six months before that, getting way better battery life, way better performance. It made everybody just change their mind on what Apple is capable of. Of course, with Apple Silicon, the M1 chip, that was so well executed where we did have some software things that were still being optimized, but it just worked so well. And Windows laptop users actually started switching over and buying MacBooks. But moving on from that point, Apple found themselves in a very weird situation. They had an absolute killer that was launched. And because of that, even the MacBook Pro did not sell that well. But what happened afterwards was actually a little more interesting because we got the redesign and they needed to launch a redesign because how else are they gonna get you to upgrade, right? So they gave us this design that we're still sticking with with the M4, but they raised the price by 200 bucks. You know, we got the M2 chip at the time, but we got different limitations as well. And that has been the case for the last few years. I don't know if you guys remember this, but the M2 MacBook Air, it was a nice design, right? But a lot of people said, we're not gonna buy it for a couple of reasons. The first one is the M1 is more than good enough. And a lot of people ended up sticking with that M1. But the second reason is they actually gimped the storage chip inside of there uh, because they needed a reason for people to upgrade to the pro models and maybe they could have saved a little bit of money. But because of that, the M1 MacBook Air in real world performance would actually beat out the M2 if you have different real world things open on your machine. And that was crazy. From that point, Tim was still doing some of his tricks, which is smart in a way for business sense. He's great at making money. Apple's great at getting people to spend their money, but we still had certain limitations, right? You can only use one screen and then you still had eight gigabytes of RAM. And when the M3 chip came out, that was a very powerful chip. But because most of these machines had eight gigs of RAM on them and people go to the store, they buy one as eight gigs of RAM, that really choked up the M3 chip even more so than the M2. Now, at the same time, we've had a big shift, right? Pricing and the reason why this price tag just blows my mind, it kept going up, right? We have a lot of inflation. The parts keep going up in price. Stuff is getting less and less affordable. And you guys let me know down in the comment section, you know, how that has been and how that has affected your tech purchasing and your upgrades. And even though Apple launched the 15 inch MacBook Air, and then, you know, we got the M3 chip, we got better performance. Unfortunately, sales just aren't at the point that they expected and that they wanted to. And I think that definitely makes sense. So Apple found themselves in a very interesting situation. The tech is getting better. They're making upgrades, incremental upgrades like they always have, which has made them a lot of money, but people aren't buying like they used to. And that got us to this machine right here, which changed everything. But first, our sponsor ESR has finally solved the issue of using clunky and hard to carry mice with laptops. 
with the world's first magnetically attachable wireless mouse with a built-in charging cable called MagMouse. And yes, this mouse can attach to your laptop with their sticky base that goes on the laptop screen, so no more losing your mouse at the most inconvenient time. This mouse has two connection modes, either using Bluetooth 5.0 or the USB-A mini plug. And what's nice is that you never have to worry about carrying an extra cable because the MagMouse comes with one at the bottom, which is really convenient. And because of that, no more replacing dead batteries. And this mouse fits comfortably in your palm with seven buttons, as well as sensitivity control right on the top. And you can scroll and tilt in any direction on the wheel, which is nice. So go ahead and check out the mouse using the links in the description below. And you can get a 32% discount for early bird special on Kickstarter starting on April 28th. So with the launch of the M4 MacBook Air, I knew that something has greatly changed. Now, of course, we can't read Tim Cook's mind. We can't read Apple's mind, but doing this kind of a job for a long time, being in the tech field, we know where Apple has shifted. For the longest time, they would put in special limitations that we complained about just on purpose to get you to spend more money. And they were masterful at doing that. You had the ladder that people talk about where you get a device, it's cheap to get in, but then you need to make a few upgrades to make it better. And then by the time you do that, you're at the price point of the next product. So you end up stepping up to there and that made Apple so much money. But with this machine, Apple had to scrap that because not only did we get some changes, but even on the internal, things that you might not know about, like the storage chips, which we talked about for a long time, and we made a big deal about it, and it made sense, they fixed that as well. So they're fixing some of their mistakes, some of the hardware stuff, also software limitations, which this device now can support dual external screens along with the internal display, like they did back in the Intel days. And that limitation was put in there just to get people to spend more money. That has been fixed. But ultimately, the fact that the M4 MacBook Air comes with 16 gigs of RAM at the base is game changing. We know that their eight gig of RAM limitation, well, that make it, made a big difference, especially as they upgraded their Apple Silicon chips. And now with the M4 being even more powerful, it really mattered. And for the first time ever, you're getting a 999 machine at the drop point where they launched it, very cheap, that gives you everything that you need. And when somebody goes into the store to buy a base model, it is now well equipped that you could just do that. And in my opinion, the only reason Apple did that is because they were forced to do that because their first machine was just so good and people were not upgrading. And along with these times where people don't have as much money to spend and to upgrade, they really had to change something to get people to do so. And I think it worked and I think it made sense. And right now you can buy this machine for $899 which once again, just blows my mind. That means that they are trying to move their laptops. They want to get sales and now they have to fight for it, which they didn't have to do in the past. And we actually have some proof of this. We have this new article that came out saying that MacBook shipments surge, but customer demand remains unclear. And this is showing that the PC manufacturers have upped their shipments by 6.7%, but Apple actually, increase their supply to vendors with a 17% increase in unit shipments. Now what has to happen is the people have to buy the product, which is why we're getting this insane kind of a deal. Now in one way, Apple wants you to buy it. They need you to buy it. But on the other hand, with this machine, the M4 MacBook Air, it just finally makes sense to purchase one of these. Now, let me show you this. This is the government's inflation calculator. And if you take a look and we put in $999, which is what the M1 MacBook Air launched at, currently it would be costing $1,238. So in this same last four to five years, 
Um, the in inflations went up, the buying power of the dollar went down, and you can get this machine for $899 now. To match the price, I would have to put in $725 back then to get this $899 right now. So this would be like getting this machine for 725 bucks if we go back and account for inflation. And you're getting such a better machine right now with performance and specs and battery life. I mean, look at this performance in single core. We have a really big improvement. This M4 chip is the best that you can get right now in a laptop in single core, but it gets even crazier looking at real world productivity. Here in Xcode, we are literally at half the time uh, running our Xcode benchmark. And yes, it's been a few years now, but also factoring in the price and the feature set, it is massive. And surprisingly, looking at Cinebench here, we also have close to double the performance even though this chip right here uh, draws more power, it is still fanless, but we have such a huge boost in maxing out the CPU in a fanless machine, it is crazy. And here's where we really get to see the massive improvements with Apple making this shift or being forced to make this shift, giving us 16 gigs of RAM that's fast with this new chip. Look at this performance, 58 seconds compared to two minutes and 32 seconds for our Lightroom test. You previously would have to spend 3,500 bucks, get slower performance than this with worse battery life in a thick machine with multiple fans, where now you get that performance in this laptop that I'm holding with just two fingers. It just absolutely blows my mind and it doesn't stop there. Look at this 3D rendering right here. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. And that just shows the other hardware improvements, not just, you know, a regular benchmark score where the graphics and the special hardware, like uh, the ray tracing is implemented now in a base MacBook Air, where you can actually do some 3D rendering on this $899 machine. Uh, with that, the video encoders for the first time have been changed since the M1. They are faster now, so the capability that you're getting is insane. And we have done many comparisons to Windows laptops. Um, and at this $899 price point, the quality of the machine itself, the performance, the battery life, I mean, the deal is absolutely crazy. And that is where I'm saying, it's just blowing my mind because when did we ever think of Apple as a value brand where you're getting a value product, not a premium expensive product, you're getting that same killer product, but at a value price point. And that is just crazy. So uh, thankfully for the consumer, we are here at this point. And if you've been thinking about upgrading from say an M1 or a different machine, I mean, now is an amazing time to be a consumer because Apple had to give us this value. They were forced to. So there you guys go. That is my opinion. I am just shocked. You guys let me know your thoughts on what is happening right now. And you guys can check it out using the link down below. Check out one of those comparisons right over there as well. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.